from hurling threats at a police officer to having your private messages leaked. Here are players who ruined their career. One of the more recent players to completely obliterate his NHL career is Alex Galchenyuk. Galchenyuk entered the league in 2012, being selected third overall by the Montreal Canadiens. He played six seasons for the Habs and posted decent numbers before being traded to the Coyotes for Max Domi. From there on, he saw himself playing for four different teams before finally landing a spot on the Avalanche. He found himself pointless during the 11 games he played with the Avs though, and during the 2023 offseason he signed a contract with the Coyotes again on July 1st. But don't worry, because this didn't last long at all. Just 8 days later, Galchenyuk was arrested for an alleged hit and run, and he didn't take his arrest too kindly, because he can be seen in the back of the squad car hurling threats towards a police officer while on the way to jail. He told the police officer that his kids and his wife will die and that it will only take one phone call to take out his entire family. Once the Coyotes heard the news of Galchenyuk's arrest, they took swift action and terminated his contract immediately. Galchenyuk ended up moving to Russia and joined a KHL team. But I really doubt that Galchenyuk will even bother trying to make a comeback in the NHL because even if he tried, there just can't be an NHL team that would be willing to take on a contract of a mediocre aging player. Many former and current NHLers over the years have come out and stated that they struggled with addiction issues throughout their career. With easy access to social media, it was only a matter of time until a player slipped up and showed the world the dark side of being a professional athlete. Adam Ruzichka posted a short video to his Instagram stories where it appears he was snorting cocaine. When the Coyotes caught wind of the video, they placed him on waivers and then terminated his contract. He would later leave a message to his fans on Instagram by saying, I made a big mistake and I am going to learn from my mistakes. I love you all and I am forever grateful to you all. As of the making of this video, Ruzichka will be playing in the KHL according to his Elite Prospects page. I bet you didn't know that the only player to ever be banned from the NHL is Billy Kochu for assaulting officials after a bench clearing brawl. Kachu was instructed by his head coach to start a melee, but it was only supposed to be against the other team. Kachu then took his anger out on two officials by attacking one referee on the ice and then deciding to tackle another in the hallway. The league handed down a lifetime ban from the NHL, but two years later it was lifted for him to be able to play in the minor leagues. But this next player didn't ruin his career because of illegal activities, but rather because he didn't want to adjust his gameplay. While in juniors, he established himself as a flashy playmaker with amazing stick handling skills. He was selected 25th overall by the Edmonton Oilers. He spent his first year playing in the AHL and earned 53 points in 69 games. He did play one game that season with the Oilers, but he failed to register a point. The next season was even more promising in the AHL as he earned 76 points in 78 games. He played in two games with the Oilers, but he again failed to register a point. He again started playing his third season in the AHL, but this time he managed to earn three assists in four games with the Oilers. And after three seasons with the Oilers, he was placed on waivers and claims by the New York Islanders. But the Islanders were looking to give Skemp a chance, and he played in 44 games that season, earning 25 points in total. Because his numbers in the NHL were still not up to par, the Islanders decided to give him one last chance in the next season, but unfortunately, Skemp only earned 22 points in 45 games. But thankfully for Skemp, the Atlanta Thrashers were in dire need for a playmaker, and they decided to give him one last shot. But he still couldn't earn a full-time roster spot and opted to head overseas the next season. Where it went wrong for Skemp was in his inability to adjust his game to be able to succeed in the NHL. Skremp just wanted to be a flashy player like he was back in the OHL, and because of that, he found himself not being able to live up to the expectations as a first round pick. In 1946, a betting ring operation in the Maple Leafs Gardens was discovered. The investigation led to one player being suspended 9 games for betting on his own team. The betting problem continued into the next season, so the league threatened harsher punishments if any player was to be found betting. Well, two players from the Boston Bruins decided they didn't like that rule and decided that they would take their chances. Don Gallinger gambled on the Boston Bruins from time to time, but he changed from betting on the Bruins for winning to betting on the Bruins for losing. 
when he met Billy Taylor. Taylor told Gallinger that he could double his yearly salary by simply betting on his team to lose. The two became involved with the career criminal, James Tamer, and got away with the betting for three months. Early into 1948, Bruins management became suspicious of Taylor's poor play and traded him away to the Rangers. But Gallinger was caught during a conversation with Tamer that was wiretapped. Once Tamer got off the phone with Gallinger, he phoned Taylor to place a bet on the Boston Bruins to lose. The police informed the NHL president of the wiretaps, and both players were banned from the NHL for life. In 1970, the ban was lifted and Taylor became a scout for the Penguins, but Gallinger never returned to the NHL. Mike Richards was a contributing factor in the LA Kings winning two Stanley Cups in the 2010s. Richard was drafted by the Flyers and quickly made a name for himself. After two seasons, he was selected to be an assistant captain, and in the following year, he was promoted to captain. Soon after becoming captain, rumors emerged that some players on the team were drinking and partying excessively. And of course, the media targeted Richards as being one of the players. When he was traded to the LA Kings, the media used Richards' off-ice antics as part of the reason why he was no longer a flyer. He played four seasons with the Kings before they terminated his contract as a result of alleged drug charges. Richards was caught trying to bring oxycodone across the Canadian border. The charges were stayed by a judge in Manitoba. Although he joined the Washington Capitals in the second half of the 2015 season, he ended up retiring once it was over. Who knows what he could have been had he not been caught but we can't deny that he was a pretty good penalty kill specialist. Brandon Leipzig found himself on the outside looking in after a private group chat was leaked. While some may agree that what is said in private should stay private, it still doesn't look too good. It only fueled the flames about how toxic the culture is in hockey. One screenshot showed Leipzig commenting on how fat Tanner Pearson's wife is and used oink oink to describe another. One showed him making fun of Connor McDavid's girlfriend's legs by saying, greasy beat up legs on Cindy Lou. It was even alleged from one of the comments that Leipzig loved coke and wasn't a fan of his line mates, often calling them fucking losers. When these comments made its way onto Twitter, Leipzig apologized and said that his friend's account was hacked and that the individual posted screenshots of their chat. He wanted to take full responsibility for his actions and hoped to learn to become a better person. But when you're a fourth liner, you're easily expendable and off went Leipzig to the KHL after the Capitals terminated his contract. Only 25 years old and already having two Stanley Cup rings to your name would make any player's dreams come true. Voinov should have been on top of the world going into the 2014-15 season after winning a second Stanley Cup. Instead, he was facing an indefinite suspension from the league. Voinov was at a Halloween party with his wife when he punched her and later on choked her with both of his hands pushed her to the ground, kicked her, and slammed her head into the TV. He pled no contest to a misdemeanor charge of corporal injury to a spouse. He served two months in jail and returned to Russia to play in the KHL. He even tried to make a comeback in 2019, but thankfully Bettman refused to let him come back and instead gave him a one-year suspension. To this day, he continues to play in the KHL and hopefully he will stay there until he retires. When we say World Juniors, the first thing that many Canadians think of is the 2018 Canadian Juniors team. The team was hosting a fundraising gala in London when in the early hours of June 19th, 2018, a 20-year-old female was brought into a hotel room where some of the team members had her perform undisclosed sexual acts, intimidated her, and prevented her from leaving the room. Later that day, the London police received a call from a relative of the victim and they launched an investigation into the matter. But the matter was closed in 2019 with no charges. The same victim sued Hockey Canada in 2022, alleging eight members of the World Junior Team were responsible. Hockey Canada settled the lawsuit, paying out $3.35 million in damages and upsetting the hockey world even more. An investigation was launched and revealed Hockey Canada had two secret funds to pay settlements on claims of sexual assault and abuse. The police reopened the investigation and new charges to five out of the eight players who were being accused were laid. 
the NHL decided to launch its own investigation and would release the findings to the public when completed. Fans had to wait two years to find out the names of the five players, although shortly before the players were mentioned, the teams of the players accused granted leaves of absences. In the end, Carter Hart, Michael McLeod, Cal Foote, Dylan Dubé, and Alex Formanton were the players named in the lawsuit. All five players are pleading not guilty to the allegations. The trial date is set to begin next year, and if they're looking to play professionally for the time being, they may as well join the others from the list and head overseas to the KHL. Well, there you have it. Players who ruined their careers. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to leave a comment if we missed anything, make sure to leave a suggestion about what you want to see next, and don't forget to check out any other videos on the channel.